I'd like to welcome everyone to our public forum, Tourism Matters, Prince Edward Island, Vision 2021. Good evening. My name is Kevin Ruthley. I'm the CEO of the Tourism Industry Association, PEI. I have a vested interest in the tourism industry. Many of you may know me, many of you not, may not. With my past involvement, including experience in all aspects of the industry. For over 33 years, I worked in branded and non-branded hotels. From booking accommodations to filling rooms, cleaning rooms, serving guests in the restaurants, and volunteering on numerous boards. I have a passion to grow our industry in all facets of tourism. Tourism Industry Association of PEI is taking the lead in the development of an integrated province-wide strategic plan for tourism, along with the support of ACOA and the province of Prince Edward Island. Tai Pai is a province-wide, not-for-profit, membership-based organization dedicated to the advancement of PEI's tourism industry. We promote and support policies, programs, and activities that benefit the continued growth and development of the province's tourism industry. Now is a pivotal time to shape the future of our industry. Industry stakeholders are vital to engage and collaborate in formulating an actionable roadmap towards the benefit of our future in tourism on Prince Edward Island. Tourism affects each and every one of us across the province from accommodations to restaurants, gas stations, convenience stores, golf courses, live theater, craft shops, attractions, parks, to name a few. Tourism in Prince Edward Island reflects the highest GDP across the country at 6.4% employs over 15,000 employees. We welcome over 1.3 million visitors per year and generate over 401 million in revenues to our economy. Tourism generates the most tax of any industry paying for healthcare, education, and paving roads. All of you here today have a responsibility and we need your involvement and energy to speak up, talk about the burning issues and propose solutions to continue enhancing and growing this most important industry. The process began in April when we pulled together a working group of committed stakeholders from across the island to drive Vision 2021. Tourism Development International, TDI, has been hired to assist in developing a new five-year strategic plan for the PEI tourism industry. The process up to now has included market research, stakeholder survey of local operators and trade surveys, and focus group discussions to formulate a situational analysis, which will take time. I entice every one of you to go to our website for complete information on the process from the beginning up to now. It is live, it tells you who's involved, schedule of events, and deliverables into the future. Our website is www.peitourismmatters.ca. You, you can also send feedback at any time. This evening, we're looking for your commitment in being engaged towards the success of the next five years. Any idea is good, speak up and be heard. Today is your opportunity. I'd now like to introduce Peter McNulty, the Managing Director, and Kieran, Kieran Toot, Tourism Planning, an investment specialist who will be leading today's forum. Thank you. So, um, what, I, what I'd like to do is uh, go through the presentation, uh, starting off by looking at what the objectives of the study was, the methodology, the extensive market research program that we put in place, um, the SWOT analysis. Um, so. The primary objectives overall is to uh, deliver a five-year strategic plan for tourism uh, for Prince Edward Ireland. And the plan here is, we're not starting from scratch, the plan is to build on the past successes and to create a shared vision for tourism competitiveness in the island. Um, the strategic, strategic plan uh, will be required to look at these four pillar areas of, as we said, leadership, vision, and defined growth through partnerships and collaboration, which is so essential uh, to tourism. Access and the removal of barriers to growth. Um, identify and confirm authentic visitor experiences and focus marketing 
by the industry. I mentioned briefly uh, that this is a three-stage process, which some of the you in the audience um, who, who are on the steering group will be aware of this, but for those who are not, this is the end of the first stage where we're taking stock situation analysis. So we, we don't have any grand plans at this juncture. That's coming further on as we move into strategic options where we, we will hope to prepare an overall framework and then the strategy itself as the third third phase. Uh, not, not to try and bamboozle you, but we have drawn uh, this situation analysis material from a number of sources, including uh, the review of the existing product, which is ongoing, uh, looking at the markets uh, that are serving Prince Edward Island. We're looking at a number of examples of best practice and case studies. You'll see we'll be drawing on that. We've had extensive consultations, many of you we've, we've met already, uh, individually and in the form of a program of focus sector focus groups back in, um, in May, late May. Then we also mobilized uh, an external trade survey with tour operators and travel writers in Prince Edward Island's main markets. But we also, uh, some of you may well have, and if you have, thank you for participating in the survey of um, operators here on the island. So what we've done is we've drawn from a number of different sources, and I'm gonna be reporting back on those sources now. Uh, and then we pull them together in the form of a SWOT analysis. So what have we learned in terms of emerging trends? And these are the main emerging trends in North American tourism. And in many respects, they, they mirror what's happening now at a global level. There's increased global competition. Uh, destinations are well funded and heavily advertised. The bar is getting higher. Uh, there's online planning and booking. Over 80% over of travelers are now planning their trips online. Quality service, there's growing demand for higher levels of quality in terms of uh, service provision of products. Uh, greater environmental consciousness. Uh, increased demand for sustainable approaches. Uh, safety and security in a, in a unstable world that we live in, uh, in parts of, of uh, well, in many parts of the world, in Europe, in parts of, of, of the States and in Asia with terrorism, people are looking for safe havens. And obviously in each of these checklists we'd be seeing in terms of strategy formulation for the island, we see how can we, how can we match with these drivers? In terms of shifts in the North American tourism market, there have been some changes in behavior, which are not necessarily new. These have been, these, these have been happening now for, for a number of years. Uh, the challenging traveler, uh, tourists are now seeking to explore new off the beaten path destinations. There's a growing demand for unique, high quality experiences. People are no longer happy to just plunk their bums on a beach uh, and vegetate for, for a week. They want to exercise their minds and their bodies, okay? And that ties in with greater health consciousness, health awareness and environmental consciousness. And then of course there's a, a, a trend towards shorter and more frequent uh, vacations. So we're talking about the external trade survey. We uh, carried out an online survey of 105 representatives of the travel trade in, in the main markets. Uh, and the main findings uh, are as follows. There has been, a, in terms of there's a growth in demand uh, expected over the next two years for culinary tourism, soft adventure, experiential tourism, and cultural tourism. This is, these are the areas that the external trade, tour operators, uh, specialist operators, travel writers and journalists, this is what they're telling us. That in terms of Prince Edward Island, that Anne of Green Gables and Charlottetown are the two most popular products attractions featured in their products on a spontaneous basis. Now, when we presented them with a list of product 
available, we got a very different picture. Oh, they said, oh yes, we do feature, these are the much wider range of products featured in, the, in uh, Prince Edward Island, including culinary tourism and food, culture, as well as traditional sun, uh, beach uh, vacations, soft adventure and experiential tourism. But it's interesting, isn't it, that the top of the mind awareness was, as, as, as you had seen previously, a more limited uh, offer and a more limited top of the mind. So we asked, what do you see as Prince Edward Island's primary attributes as a, as, as a tourism de destination? And that is seen as beautiful scenery and great seafood. Uh, the main weaknesses associated with the island are seen as lack of awareness and access. Not a great support. In a very competitive environment where destinations are growing, bigger budgets, that's not altogether surprising. And you throw into the fact that uh, and we've, we understand this because we're coming from Ireland, which is also an island destination. And island destinations have to work that bit harder. The main advantage of Prince Edward Island as a tourism destination is seeing the fact that it's an, <coughs> it's an island. And it's one which is small, compact size. That's seen as its uh, main competitive advantage. The most important actions that the external trades see for the development of tourism are the development of touring routes, uh, soft adventure, uh, uh, activities and features in the national parks, and also cultural heritage. Now even those four suggestions alone give us a lot of potential material to work with. And what we're trying to do is layer up on that in terms of our knowledge of the island over the course of this week. But these are pointers from the people who are in the industry. We said, well, how do you assess uh, uh, the PI's potential? And this is a graphic illustration of the point that was presented uh, just a minute ago. You can see that culinary, food, soft adventure, experiential tourism, rural tourism, festival and events, and culture. These are all seen as having high potential uh, and you can see also, uh, but perhaps not to the same extent, you've got general holidays and sun towards the end of that spectrum. Now, when we come to see what you, the operators on the island, have to say, we ask the exact same question. You, you get sun and beach tourism featuring much higher on the radar in terms of potential. So what you have there is a is, is a very, very interesting uh, uh, dichotomy and divergence of views of what, what the external trade are telling us and what we believe in, on, 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 on the island offers the greatest potential. Interesting. We also asked the external trade what months uh, of, offer the greatest potential for growth and you can see Apart from the summer months, particular September is identified as a, a month for, for growth potential. So, if we move over uh, to now, we mentioned we've spoken about the external trade. Let's move to the survey of local operators. Many of you who here, can I just ask for a show of hands who did participate in this survey? Okay, okay. So we've 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 about ten. So that's great. Thank you, uh, by the way, all of those of you who did uh, participate in the survey. Uh, it was conducted uh, in, in uh, late May, early June, and the main findings are as follows. That the uh, local operators here um, on the island are optimistic regarding the prospects for tourism uh, this year. Uh, they see the primary comparative advantages as being beach, uh, good, great seafood and beautiful landscape. Uh, so we can see that's it, it shown in graphic format. Quite a number of advantages there. The marketing actions with, uh, which operators would like to see implemented is well, further investment in promotion generally. Not surprising. We would all like to see greater resources allocated to marketing. But particularly and interestingly, and this ties in with, with 
you know, the, the trends that we saw earlier. More investment in web, marketing, social media, so on. Uh, and promotion of rural PEI has come through as a feature there. The sort of product development interventions identified and favor would be further investment in, 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 in culinary tourism, cultural tourism, soft adventure, and initiatives to extend the season. And we made this point yesterday with the steering group. You know, it's not as if these things aren't happening, but we get the impression, having been here on our third visit, that in the industry here is, is kind of putting its toe in the water in terms of soft adventure, putting its toe in the water in terms of culture and tourism. It's beginning to happen, but there's a great opportunity out there, so we're not saying that it's, it, it's not happening. Interestingly, there's a call for a more unified approach to overcome fragmentation. This came through from the survey and from the seven uh, focus, sector focus groups that we had and from the individual consultations. People saying, this is, there's quite a number of organizations at provincial level, at regional level, and even at city municipality level. Organization after organization, which um, uh, put a kind of, uh, are all chasing scarce resources in terms of fees that, that industry have to pay and contributions have to pay towards, and then perhaps uh, lacking a unified voice, you know, following different agendas and so on and so forth. And Prince Edward Island is not unique in that. We've seen this is a phenomenon of tourism throughout the world. Why is it so? It's because it goes back to the fragmented nature of tourism. And it's a theme that we've seen before and we will be encouraging. I've said it many times in our meetings uh, with Tai Pai and with the steering group, is we would from the off, and even though we haven't seen everything yet, but we will be encouraging initiatives of scale, be they product development initiatives and marketing initiatives to try and overcome this fragmentation that has been identified by, by those of you who here who participated and your colleagues. The months of May, June, September and October are seen to offer the greatest potential for tourism growth. So if we want to move on now to the third source of research, which were the focus group discussions. And you can see we carried out seven focus group discussions in May, late May, early June, uh, under those uh, topics. We broke the industry, invited them along, uh, on, uh, and we had some very interesting findings. So on the subject of leadership and uh, uh, vision and partnership and collaboration, uh, this is the feedback that's been given to us. This often people saying that tourism doesn't often get the recognition that it deserves as a major contributor to the economy. There's a need to con for continued investment in product and marketing to ensure continued growth. Um, people saying that, that uh, Prince Edward Island is more than the uh, gentle island much more than that. Uh, there's an opportunity to tie tourism in, in with the other two major industries on the island with agriculture and fisheries. This came through a number of individuals. Uh, to continue to invest in product, as we said, that there appears to be a lack of coordinated strategy to extend the season. That's one of the reasons why we're here. Uh, a disconnect with, uh, 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 for more role clarity and less overlap between the agencies, between Tourism PEI, between Tai Pai, between the regional tourism uh, organizations and the sector groups. Overlap, lack of clarity, this is what was said to us. Um, in terms of authentic visitor experiences, um, what the groups have said back to us was that it, uh, experienced little tourism offers tremendous potential for we, for the arts, the heritage, uh, but it needs more long-term support. Uh, culinary tourism and uh, Canada's food island, all of that, that's, that's a big promise, but there's a need to back that up through consistency of delivery. Um, there needs to be a constant focus placed on authentic, authenticity, authentic coastal experiences, 
developments and product developments that can differentiate uh, Prince Edward Island from uh, its competitors. In terms of access and the removal of barriers to growth, uh, people were saying to us that very often timing of provincial funding is too late to uh, help uh, tie in with their own prom programming. Uh, uh, very often operators uh, lack the skills to prepare funding requests. They don't know how, how to go about that. They may have the ideas, but that, that can be a barrier. Access to skills and employment programming is often a challenge, particularly in the shoulder months, when, when a lot of young people, students, go back to college. This has been sent back to us. And then there's a need for professional development, uh, for basic business skills development, uh, mm -hmm. and sharing of knowledge transfer in terms of social media, marketing, uh, and product development skills. In terms of focused marketing by the industry, there seems to be a lot of confusion around the Prince Edward Island brand. People raising the questions about Gentle Island, does that still apply? Uh, does the brand change, has it changed too frequently? Um, also feeling that perhaps the island is slow to recognize changes in the, in the marketplace terms of markets and it's more than just families there's some great opportunities out there for FIT for the seniors market for uh, sports tourism culture tourism soft adventure so these this is the folks kind of and they're part of it they're recognizing they're part of it but they're they're saying these are these are some of the issues and challenges could I move Again, from that was an internal perspective of what the industry, the operators were saying, move back ex to get an external frame of reference once again. So in Newfoundland, and we have another, another member, I should say the other members of the team are um, Stan Cook. Um, Stan is from Newfoundland and he runs his own uh, soft adventure and kayaking business uh, in Newfoundland. Uh, Robert Travers. Uh, who's our marketing expert, and then my uh, business partner and brother Dave McNulty, who's our uh, trade and research expert, and Dave is over and participant. You may have met him at some of the focus groups. So Stan, this is Stan's work, and um, he, he recommended that we uh, have a look at, at Newfoundland, and what they've been engaged in is very interesting, and there may be, we're not saying we have to take this, but there may be some learnings for, for Prince Edward. Uh, a good example of partnership with government and industry, and that has been essential to the uh, success and development of tourism in the province. They started by putting a bold vision in place, and they established a tourism board to set the priorities. And that, that tourism board comprised repre representatives from both the government side and the private sector. And you see, uh, they have managed to uh, overcome some of the issues, not all, but uh, some of the challenge and achieve growth. Uh, this set out the strategic directions in terms of leadership, uh, uh, sustainable transport network, the importance of market intelligence, which is an issue that we would be coming to, product development, uh, investment in technology, marketing, and the development, the whole HRD side, the development of the workshop. So there was a strategic directions to take by Newfoundland. Now, I want to bring your attention to uh, Ireland and the wide Atlantic Way. Can you all see that map? This is our country of Ireland. Some of you may have visited. But the wide Atlantic Way is a product development initiative of scale that runs for over 2,000 miles along the entire west coast of Ireland. And it was put in place and uh, started, work started about five years ago and there's been a five-year development program which is coming to completion now. Up to about five years ago and uh, my colleague Kieran worked with the Irish Tourism, uh, National Tourism Development Authority and he knows far more about this project than I do so you can talk to him afterwards if time permits. But up to five years ago uh, Ireland had seven regions, okay, three of which were on the western seaboard, the northwest region, the west, and the southwest. And within each region, there was a, an average of about 
four or five counties. So you have regional tourism initiatives, uh, branded initiatives, uh, separate marketing initiatives, product development, uh, pretty much everybody doing their own thing. You had, you had uh, touring routes that stopped at county boundaries and at regional boundaries, you've seen it all before. Okay, so the fact of the matter was that collectively the region was losing market share to uh, the rest of Ireland, particularly to the east coast and to Dublin over here. And there was a feeling that, and a recognition uh, by the stakeholders and by the tourist authorities that, um, that there was far too much fragmentation of, of effort uh, fragmentation in terms of product development and how the product is presented in the international marketplace and fragmentation in terms of marketing effort. So uh, they came together and came up with the concept of developing a, a, a route called the Wild Atlantic Way. It was originally, the prototype name was the Wild Atlantic uh, Route, but that was seen as being confining it too much to car touring. And they, they, through focus group research, they refined the name to the Wild Atlantic Way, which opened up the entire western seaboard for a wide range of markets, including car touring, but also cycling, walking, and even people who wanted to, to do the west of Ireland by boat. And indeed now, the Wild Atlantic Way is being fe featured as a product destination on cruise ship itineraries. So what you have is that uh, the west of Ireland is spectacularly beautiful, quite fragmented, and it lacked an integrated theme. So the Wide Atlantic Way, um, the aim was to develop a long distance touring route with the purpose of achieving high brand vis visibility for the entire west of Ireland. And the primary objective of the Wild Atlantic Way was to increase visitor numbers, dwell time, spend, and satisfaction, everything all the object objectives that destinations want to achieve. And that's beginning to happen. It's making a great impact. Obviously, there was a, a strategic approach to all of this uh, over six stages, including developing the brand proposition. And that's the Wild Atlantic Way. And what you have now is that it, you have individual operators. And in this industry of ours and tourism, it's mainly made up of small small operators. But you've got individual operators, uh, B&Bs, guest houses, uh, uh, small uh, retail outlets, restaurants, they're buying into this. So they're, they're theming their product offer uh, along the Wild Atlantic Way. Visit me, I'm on the Wild Atlantic Way. And they're developed, they've developed a sort of a culinary route, uh, the Wild Atlantic culinary experience of it and so on and so forth. So people are buying into it. So it, it's not seen as any threat to the breaking down of some of the original programs that were run on a regional and county basis, but it's seen as something there that's there for everybody along the Western seaboard. So there was route identification. Uh, there was, that was a two year program and identifying exactly which roads should be taken and in most cases they stick very closely to the coast uh, uh, to the atlantic coastline um, developing a wayfinding strategy uh, identifying key discovery points and points of interest along the way and then it comes to selling the wild atlantic way experiences and the through marketing and communications program we we brought this forward and uh, we decided to run with this as a case study after our first visit because even in the first round of consultations it was evident to us that there's for a small destination which Prince Edward Island is there's a lot of fragmentation in terms of product uh, in terms of marketing effort and in terms of administration and we're not saying that you, you have to go but there may be some learnings here uh, that could be applicable if we look at Switzerland, an entirely different case study chosen for a different reason. Is Switzerland, off, and it's a huge country by comparison to, to, to Prince Edward Island, um, but it offers a very good example of an integrated approach to information and communications. 
yeah, have a look at their web portal. It's the main visitor portal for tourism and it's very, very user friendly in terms of people going on it and they're able to, you're able to download different suggested itineraries, but also they, they can get information for different times of the year and so on and so forth. And uh, then there's very high quality standard signage uh, and a prepared, uh, preparedness, as we've seen in the wide Atlantic way, to subjugate narrow, narrow territorial interests. And I think that's important. So that's a, an extract from the web portal there. Uh, again, very good example of integrated communications. Uh, conscious that I am breaking up my own rule of going over time, but I think we want to pull a lot of the, what you've seen there into a SWOT analysis here. And so what are we saying in terms of the strengths of Prince Edward Island uh, as a tourism destination? It's, it's, it's an island, and people love islands. It, you know, particularly, and most of us now live in urban uh, context, whether it's medium size or large or, or uh, metro, big metropolitan areas, people love getting out and getting away and to, to rural places, but particularly to, to island destinations. So that's a competitive advantage. And allied to that is the coastal environment, uh, accessible, beautiful, in, uh, unspoiled coastline. Food, authentic cuisine, fresh from the boat and farm to fork. Uh, history and culture, Anne of Green Gables, the birthplace of the Confederation with historic built heritage. We've been hugely impressed with some of the lovely houses and also the beautiful churches that are dotted around the landscape of the island. Charlottetown, a very attractive town with a critical mass and destinations, if destinations have uh, as, a, as a main capital town, uh, a, a strong product offer that can, that can help the destination in its entirety. It uh, is one of Canada's leading coastal national parks. There's a vibrant heritage creative sector and many, it has attracted many people from the arts community to move here, relocate here. Uh, a successful track record of festival events, good, good road co connectivity, certainly with the bridge Federation Bridge onto the island and getting around the island. A pristine environment, a highly engaged industry, and we've seen as the, your willingness to come out to us this evening is a good example of that. And community support. People are largely supportive of tourism, and that's not always the case in, in destinations. The weaknesses is, as we said, perhaps the poor alignment of marketing activities between agencies and between public and private. Uh, product fragmentation, we've spoken about that. The share of voice, marketing budgets, both public and private, inadequate to build uh, destination awareness. Some of the product missings are perhaps lack of product variety, insufficient soft adventure options, uh, insufficient authentic experiences. As, it, as we said, we're not saying that they're not there. We're saying that the island is beginning to dip its toe in the water on this side in terms of cultural tourism, soft adventure. But is there, is there an opportunity to push the boat out further? We, uh, organization is, is, is seen as a weakness in terms of uh, industry structure being very disparate, as we've said. Obviously, seasonality is a weakness. Access to labour, particularly during the shoulder months, uh, uh, an over overly traditional operational uh, culture. Uh, uh, perhaps young younger people are uh, discouraged uh, in terms of becoming entrepreneurs, and a high dependence on government funding. Um, but look, there's the strengths and weakness. What about opportunities? an opportunity to exploit the pure, what we call the Canadiana image, um, for big city Canadians to reconnect with the authentic and distinctive heritage rich Canada. Um, special support for entrepreneurs creating soft ad adventure products. The development of uh, island coastal experiences. Further development of culinary experiences an opportunity perhaps for flagship product development around the confederation theme, uh, perhaps an orientation facility, 
the further development of the Confederation Trail, which runs right down through the island, the National Park, offering new experiences and activities in, in, in the park, and perhaps an integrated island touring route. We know at the moment each of the regions has its own touring route. Putting it out there, what if you bundled the whole lot together? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's uh, further opportunities to switch the emphasis on event creation to more upscale interests, support cultural craft training for Francophone and Mi'kmaq communities, uh, with a view to further development of authentic uh, cultural experiences. Uh, great opportunity for organization development and leadership, uh, and we will be looking at that and create craft and hobby learning experiences. The threats are national policies which restrict more flexible practices and partnership ventures by uh, public agencies. Uh, airline economics, uh, the dis disadvantages remote areas with small resident populations. Obviously, airlines look for the demand at both ends, um, and uh, so that is a factor and a threat could be uh, major oil price increases, which could impact 